Welcome to the Gospel Attic Podcast. I'm Greg Bryan. And I'm Jim Resty. We're gospel addicts because we believe the gospel of Jesus isn't just good news, it's the best news ever. We're addicted to the gospel because it doesn't just start us out in the Christian life, it is the Christian life. Join us as we look at the Bible through the lens of the gospel. Thanks so much for listening. So let's move on to chapter 14. Uh, uh, This is an interesting chapter too, because it talks about someone whose faith is weak. Um, What what do you guys make of this this chapter? Well, (laughs) so... so, (laughs) You know, it says like like, uh, read a read a read a verse or two here. Yeah, we should. Why don't we read the? uh, Let's just read the first paragraph of it. As for the one who who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on this on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and to, to be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. So this is kind of interesting. This is this is about loving each other as Christians mm-hmm. and how you know there are there are essentials that we all must hold on to but there's a, but then there's a lot of disputable matters or gray areas um where people have strong convictions um and uh you know in the context here some people refuse to eat the meat because it was sacrificed to idols and they just you know um you know that was their conviction but then I guess the person and and they were considered were they they're the, they're the weak ones right, but then the strong person was the one who understood what Jesus said. I declared all foods clean, and you know they were able to eat whatever. Um, the, the, this is this is just kind of like Christians getting along, you know, with different convictions, and I think it's pretty applicable today, don't you think? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think, think I, the idea that it's about Christians getting along comes out because there's a couple places, more than once, he says, stop passing judgment on each other. So there's definitely a lot of judgment going on. Um, and these are these are areas of conviction. But I do think, and you 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 touched on it a second ago. And I'm remembering because I remember uh, there's a uh, hearing Keller preach on this um, a couple I mean, many many years ago. I heard this, so I don't remember it very well. But I thought one of the points he made that I thought was interesting was. The person who is tougher on themselves, the person with more rules that they're following, the person who says, you know, I have these convictions and I'm going to follow these rules. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do that. They would generally think of themselves as I am the strong Christian. I'm the strong Christian because I don't eat ice cream cones, right? Or whatever, whatever it is I do. I've taken, I've cut this out of my life. And I don't do this. And I don't do that. And see, and then you look at you people, you indulge yourself, your ice cream cones, whatever you do, you're the weak ones. It's the opposite here. It's the one with it all is. the rules that is described as the weak one. When they would have said, "Well, what do you, what do you, what do you mean?" I thought I was the one being, you know, hard on myself and trying to shape up, and you're calling me the weak one. So that's the first surprise, and then the second surprise is that all the admonitions are to the strong one. He doesn't say the weak one, you know, you know, lighten up and eat some meat. You know, you're you're, you're fine. You, you know, your convictions are baseless. You know, it's you're too hard on your. He doesn't. He doesn't there's no admonishments to the weak. It's all the admonishments are for the strong. The one with the Christian liberty to not judge the weak one. I just and I, um, I said the kind of startling. This is a startling way to to write about this and put it. I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have written it this way if it was me. I would, and I wouldn't have thought of it this way. It's just it's very it's fascinating to me. It is, and you know, I realize. I think one of the, you know, there's lots of disputable matters um, that we could discuss. I think one of them could be alcohol. Sure. Um, and I realize I'm a weak brother when it comes to alcohol, because I would prefer to live in an alcohol free world where there was no alcohol, you know, and I, and the interesting thing about that is I've never, I've never been drunk in my life. I'm not tempted by alcohol. I just would prefer that it's not even an issue. 
because I just see how it's destroyed so many people's lives and how people, you know, how it's so, but I realize I'm a weak brother because um, biblically speaking, alcohol is not evil in and of itself. Right. It's, you know, the Bible says it's a sin to be drunk, but it's not a sin to drink alcohol. Now, why do you say you're a weak brother, though? Because you just don't, you sound so indifferent to it, the way you just described it. Like, it's like, you don't care about it. I'd be fine with the world didn't have it. But you don't feel like you're deriving some kind of righteousness. I Like, like you say, I don't drink and I'm better than the person who does. Or You don't seem like well, that. Well, I think it's because I, well, first of all, part of my point in sharing this is I think that we tend to think of, we, we tend to always put ourselves in the stronger brother <laughs> situation like when whenever we read the scripture it's kind of like it's kind of like when we read about the pharisees uh, you know we, we're always we never want to put ourselves we're always like well i'm not a pharisee right you know we, we we don't allow ourselves to go to the place well maybe there is a little bit of pharisee in me you know um so whenever we read passages like this nobody wants to admit they're weak right mm -hmm. um but the weak brother here is the one that has it it doesn't you know, Jesus, Jesus said, it's okay to eat all foods, right? Mm -hmm. That was his declaration. But this person, this person says, no, I cannot eat that meat sacrificed to idols. I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying like with, when it comes to alcohol, um, I, I just don't, you know, I, I sort of have that same kind of conviction. Now I'm not, I've got plenty of friends who I don't, I'm not, I have no problem with my friends drinking in front of me or all that stuff. It just, I would just prefer there was no alcohol mm -hmm. in, in the world. And so I think my conviction is it's not a biblical conviction. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what makes it weak because if I, if I held to the biblical conviction, I wouldn't, um, you know, think about, um, you know, um, I don't know the the ill effects of alcohol or something. See, I always thought uh, alcohol. I always thought as the classic example for this passage. And I think about someone who says it's sin to drink at all, and uh, alcohol is any alcohol is a sin, which as you said is not the biblical teaching. The biblical teaching is don't get drunk, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, but if someone had that conviction, so I can't do it because it's sin, and so I'm not going to drink alcohol. And and I and I feel maybe a little bit of self righteousness because of that, and I don't I don't like people who do. That if I have that person over, if you if you do not have that conviction, you say, look, I don't think it's wrong to have alcohol, but I don't want to get drunk. But you have that person over your home, then you know you you are you don't have to serve alcohol to that person. If foregoing your freedom to drink alcohol while you're with that person is the way you would as a stronger brother. Uh, treat the weaker brother you'd say mm -hmm. it's not sin for me to not serve alcohol so i won't serve it so while you're here i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put you in a position where it's gonna make you uh angry upset or tempt you or anything at all and uh, that and that i think is a way i've always thought about this passion that's the way i respect your conviction it's not my conviction i can think i could have a drink and as long as i don't get drunk but i understand it's yours so i'm not going to judge you about for that i'm going to say fine i just I'm not gonna, but I'm, so I'm not gonna put it under your nose either. Um, I hadn't thought of the way you were thinking of it, though, um, and then I think maybe you, what you're thinking of it is a, 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 even a broader way than I was thinking of it. Well, maybe, and maybe I'm wrong, you know. But look at verse three. I think this is interesting. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. It's like the temptation for the 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 temptation for the strong brother is to kind of despise the one who 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 won't eat but then it says and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats and so i guess given to my example and very very rarely i might have a thought of judgment towards somebody i might be like hey you know if they're drinking three beers in front of me <laughs> um at this dinner in this ministry setting how much alcohol are they drinking when i'm not around mm. And and I'm telling you, that's very, very rare. Most of the time I don't even pay attention, but but my temptation might be to pass judgment on the one who so that's why I think, you know, in this particular case, but what are some other disputable matters? I mean, I was thinking I made a list of a whole bunch of them, like wearing masks, 
you know, mm-hmm. um, vaccines, mm-hmm. um, yeah. politics. I mean, there's 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 so many. I mean, what what, what do you guys think? I I think you can complicate it as much as you want, and you can keep it as simple as much as you like. It's it's about you know your relationship with God. Uh, but I also feel like this whole passage kind of creates uh, a contradiction with Romans 12, where, you know, it says, do not be conformed by the temptations of this world, right? Do not be conformed by this world. So isn't alcohol, for that matter, isn't alcohol a temptation? So I don't know if it's kind of a paradox where, you know, you you kind of you kind of stay away from alcohol, but at the same time, you do not, you not do not judge anyone who is having alcohol because it's a it's a case between him and God. I mean, if he is drinking alcohol, or if he is coming, you know, any other uh, sins, that is between him and God, and not between for you to judge him. Right? What what matters for you is that what you are doing instead of what the other person is doing. So I think that's how I look at it. You know, if 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 the other person Person is putting on a mask or if the other person is us prefer having vaccine that is his choice you know that's his uh, that's his choice and whatever whatever the situation is that's between him and god like i'm i'm nobody i'm nobody to judge that person what my responsibility is that i do the things that you know i've been taught and i do the things that i believe are correct the way that i've, I've read the gospel that's how I look at it. Mm. That there's definitely a part of it here. It's like living according to conscience because he's not saying one or the other is correct, right? But you have to live according to conscience. Val, what do you think? Oh, man, I know. I'm 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 thinking here about how as as believers, I'm I'm reading over verse four. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is it is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he would be upheld for the Lord is able to make him stand. And just thinking, um, when I, I think again, it, you know, kind of comes back to the government thing of like, we're talking about gray areas here and we have to be really careful that we make distinctions in that mm-hmm. of what is a gray area and what is not a gray area. And that just comes in, you know, uh, and, and even that can be up for debate among <laughs> people, you know, like, um, but, and that comes down to how we interpret God's word and how we read God's word and all of those really important things. Um, you know, and I think it is really important. Like we are called as brothers and sisters in Christ who, when we see somebody walking in sin or in an area that is black and white to bring them back, to talk to them about it, to bring them back. Um, and yet now in verse four, it's saying, but in those gray areas, when scripture doesn't speak directly to it, um, realize that like, they're going to answer to their master, who's God, them and God, you're going to answer to your, to God also. Um, and, and don't, don't get all in the weeds with your fellow brother over a gray area. Um, and then it goes on later to encourage just to keep the unity between the brethren over the most important things. And I think like, I think the trickiest part as far as the application of this goes is um, what is a gray area and what is not based on our interpretation of scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, and then sometimes I think, you know, I'll just say like, even with the masks and the vaccines, Sometimes then I think Christians can try to like take an issue that they're passionate about for whatever reason and start to try to like squeeze scripture onto it and make it look like it's a black and white issue when it's not. Mm -hmm. And it's just poor interpretation of scripture to make it like it is. And so it's tricky. It's tricky. But I think that's where the rub is. That's a good that's a good point. So do you think alcohol is a gray area? I... I, I think that God's word teaches us not to be drunk. And but so, then go ahead. No, please, go please. Go ahead. It's it's also about personal conviction, right? Mm-hmm. I might think that alcohol is a gray area because of the things that you do once you get drunk. So why is it, why go on that path? Mm-hmm. Why why start consuming alcohol in the first place? You know, because if being drunk is a sin, 
why is drinking alcohol not a sin because that's that's pretty much the only way to get drunk so why is alcohol not a sin but getting drunk is a sin mm-hmm. so it's i think it's more about losing your conscience and losing your consciousness is a sin you know because when you're not in control of your mind you could say and do things that god does not want you to do mm-hmm. so it's i think for me it's about personal conviction like for example greg eats bacon and i don't eat bacon but i don't judge him for that i i will probably never end up eating bacon and that i despise you for that <laughs> no i i judge you for that greg i can't believe you <laughs> but like <laughs> I'll, I, I'll judge I him right now it. <laughs> I don't eat it because of how bad it is for your health. And I don't like the taste and I got no temptation towards it. But I don't judge Greg for eating it because I believe that he has different taste buds. So he enjoys it. And I'm I, I, I'm I completely fine with that. Well, thank even you. Though, thank you. Even though I feel like, you know, it's not great for your health. But I, would, I will not judge Greg for that. And, you know, it's also about... Uh, when do you initiate and you see that, you know, a brother going in the wrong direction? If you see that, you know, that person is starting alcohol and probably a few years from now, he might become an alcoholic. Yeah. So where, where do you draw that line? And even if you try and stop him, how do you do it without calling him out? And it's like I said, you know, God knows your heart. So as long as you're doing it with the right intentions, I think you you'll be all right. Yeah, Ali, I think that's a good example because that's a good example where you're caring for the person. You're doing it for because out of love for that person, you have good intentions mm-hmm. for that person's benefit, not what this is talking about. It's like, you know, judging that person, feeling better than that person, looking down on that person, despising that person, like verse three, Greg, like you were saying. But that's what you're talking about is not judgment. It's like, that's like saying, yeah, I see you're on a really bad trajectory and I'm your friend and I love you and this is going to kill you. Mm-hmm. And we should <laughs> Yeah. So can they, we? I'm talking we about all, your bacon. Really. That applies for bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, bacon. Yeah, man, you got. I got to pray about that one. Whether <laughs> no. I should eat bacon anymore. Hey, confession: I have bacon for breakfast today too. So I'm, it I'm depends on how much bacon, I guess. But <laughs> no, but can don't we? Don't you guys think? Can't we all agree that the larger theme here is spiritual pride? Maybe. Yeah. That the idea is that as believers, we can be tempted. We're because. One, you know, I've I've often said this, like some of the hardest people to get along with are Christians, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, why? They should be the best, easiest people to get along with. Well, part of it is because my expectations of Christians are so much higher than of other people. And those expectations can lead into these gray areas and can often, you mm-hmm. know, make me pass judgment towards them or despise them and everybody's on their own spiritual journey everybody's at a different maturity level everybody has different convictions on these gray years i think it's really genius that paul put this in here because he recognized that as a body of christ we're going to struggle with um comparing ourselves with other people and Mm -hmm. thinking we're better and it's kind of that 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 issue of spiritual pride do you do you guys think that's true? Like the, the, that it this connects with spiritual pride? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's also a step towards creating that harmony amongst each other, right? How do you, how do you promote harmony with one another? Because the scripture discusses that. But I think that's one way of doing it mm-hmm. where you agree with everybody, you know, and you don't judge anybody. So I think that's, 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 it's a step in that direction where you develop that harmony with each other, despite our differences, despite uh, our different opinions on things, we could still exist in the same world without chaos. And like, like we discussed in, in, in the last episode where, you know, I asked you a question that what's the biggest conflict in the world. So I think this is like a way of canceling that conflict do not have conflict with each other because conflict starts when you disagree with each other. Yeah. I think one of the key verses here is, is it verse 19 in chapter 14? So then let us pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbuilding. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know what other versions say, but it's all about what, what we're just talking about 
let's let's bring unity and let's build each other up let's think of the other person instead of us looking down on other christians or <clears throat> judging them <clears throat> what can we do to serve them and then it talks about earlier in verse uh 13 you know don't decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of your brother um so if if we know like if eating bacon in front of you ali <laughs> is a stumbling block then i shouldn't eat bacon in front of you yeah yeah and i should That's think of, i should i should think i should respect you enough to not eat bacon in front of you now it's a silly example but let me just tell you you're in the clear man. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> you're very good <laughs> but yeah oh, so that but then greg if that's the case should you organize your life because if someone's insulted by all kinds of things you could do and someone's mm -hmm. always going to be insulted by something you, you do mm -hmm. so you do you live your own life by everyone else's convictions in other words someone might look at the all the choices you make the clothes you wear the the the, the profession you take all everything you do and say i can't believe he's, he's doing that or she's doing that and so should you adapt to all those expectations and try to say, well, I've got to live up to, or do you say, look, I can't possibly live up to all those expectations. Uh -huh. um, I think it's, yeah. it's a real question. People say, like, as a, you're a Christian, a Christian, some, some Christians might look at what your choices you're making and not, and it, 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 it makes them stumble. So you shouldn't do it. And I think you, you're, you started this by saying you have a whole list of things like this. Here's another list of going to movies. Here's some Christians who say, you should just, not go to movies. Some say, well, we shouldn't go to R-rated movies. Don't go to any movies at all. I'll say, well, so oh, there's some Christians who wouldn't like it. They saw me going to theater. So I should better never go to a movie again because there's some Christian out there who might see me and stumble. Mm. So my freedom I should be limited by all their convictions. Mm -hmm. Right? That's I think it's a that's a real issue. May I look on having posed that question, I think the answer is look, I'm not gonna invite you to a movie if I know that's your conviction. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna respect that. And I won't put I won't serve you bacon, Ollie, if you come over. Okay. <laughs> you know? But but I don't think I don't think the interpretation is to gear your life to everyone's expectations because yeah. I don't think it's possible. That would be yeah, that'd be impossible. Yep. Um, yeah. And I, and I think that passage says two and thirteen says like I, I mean in common language, but never put a stumbling block um, or hindrance in the way of a brother. So I think that that shows like that it's something that you intentionally know is a stumbling block for them. And you're like scooting the rock into the sidewalk and hoping they trip on it. No. Yeah. Like, I think yep. that's, that's like the image I have in my mind of like, I know that's an issue for them. I'm going to put a stumbling block in their way. Knowing what verse it. were you looking at, Val? What um, in verse 13. Okay. Therefore, do not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide. I am never going to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. You know, like never intentionally. Yeah. 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 And so really I don't know. I think again, you get into those like you can't know everything, but saying out of love and deference to my to my brother, and I'm not going to intentionally hurt them like I that. I think that's brilliant. I think. I think you that's that's a I think you really nailed it with that. that that's that's spot on. Um, but here here's a here's a situation. This this uh, this happened during COVID, and it's COVID's getting in the rearview mirror. It's so so nice, right? It's so great because it's hard for people, especially if you're listening outside the United States, to understand the acrimony, the rancor, the disputes in Christian churches over mask or no mask, vaccine or no vaccine, into where you couldn't wouldn't want to talk about it because. People got so so passionate, upset about it. But I had one friend. I was having a good, honest conversation with him about it, and uh, talking about. Um, and he he was someone who did not want to wear a mask. And I said, we were looking. I said, well, what, what, how do you think about that in light of uh, Romans um, uh, thirteen? And this is a time when the government was mandating mask wearing, and he said that's what he didn't like, especially didn't like because they're telling me I have to, and I don't want to do it. And I have reasons why I don't think it's right, and I don't want to do it. I said, well, it's not sin. And this is the kind of conversation we're having, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not sin. So shouldn't you do it if it's sin? He said, well, and, he, and the question that he, had, he posed to me is a question I'm posing to all of you. He said, why can't you look at me like the weaker brother? I'm the weaker brother. It's my conviction. It's my conviction not to wear a mask. You, if you think you're a stronger brother, should be tolerating me. 
you should you should allow me to do this and say not make me aware because of my conviction you might think i'm a weaker brother and i am a weaker brother i don't i have this is my conviction not to wear a mask so leave me alone and don't don't have that mandate to, don't push that on down my throat i don't want to do it how do you how do you respond to that interpretation <laughs> <from Romans 14? laughs> I'm, I'm just a weaker brother leave me alone it's it's like a micro conflict well the problem you know? the problem is it's so self-centered that's the that's the mm -hmm. thing i see is like he the whole idea is that we're to be other centered yeah and so um and in his argument it's an interesting argument but i would say it just oozes of self-centeredness <laughs> and him just thinking of himself and even you know, telling you, you need to, um, and that's exactly, that's not what Jesus would, would do. Jesus yeah. would yield to, Jesus would yield to the, those around him. And, uh, so, so that would be, it's, it, it is a, yeah, it's a, and that's my thinking on it. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? Uh, I, I can't, I agree with you. Because th this could like go on forever and with everything, you know. I I do not like blue, so Greg should not be wearing <laughs> blue shirts anymore. <laughs> this could this could this could be anything. So it's I think it's about what you do, what you believe is right in the light of the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's how you and you, that's how you live your life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, like I say, you know, there is there will always be someone disagreeing with you somewhere. So, and you cannot please everybody. You can, you can probably you'll you'll end up going crazy if you try and do that, right? right. So it's more about how, it's more about your relationship with God and how you carry on that. Now, what do you think? Would you have an answer for my? <laughs> Man, I'd be stressed. It's not out. hypothetical. There's a real conversation. Yeah, no. Oh, I believe it. I've like, I haven't had that exact conversation, but I've had very close to that conversation. But I would say, you know, it's not, it, that only applies when it's a biblical conviction, not a personal right. conviction. You know, so it's not like, you know, like to the example of like Greg's shirt being blue, it's like, well, show me in the narrative of scripture why you think it's, wrong for me yeah. wearing a blue shirt it's like i mean if i know you don't like blue i might as a friend like just not wear it but <laughs> it's not a spiritual issue <laughs> that's not an air area of like brother and sisterhood in the body of christ together so i would i would say you know first of all like hey why is this like it, it has to be a spiritual issue for us to be discussing in this way is it let's decide that yeah. And if it's not an area of sin, then we kind of default to let's obey the government together. And if you still want to be the weaker brother, join me. Join me in being the uh, more mature brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's 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 that. If you acknowledge you're the weaker brother, come join me in the stronger brother. Right. Uh, gotta, let's move together towards that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I didn't think of that. Actually, I don't think I had any decent answer i always think of the right thing to say 30 minutes later i've been saying that my whole life i never think of the right thing to say at the moment so i didn't think of any of your answers at the time so but what i like about what you're saying val is you're saying we need to really think through is this a disputable matter is this a gray area and that so many things we make gray areas may not even be gray areas they're just they're just like preferences like yeah. as people um yeah. Where the the examples given given in the text, I mean, those were real issues that they had to deal with. Like this food was being sacrificed to idols, mm -hmm. and um, and then the other one was the Lord's Day, right, or the or the Sabbath, um, worshiping on, um, you know, on a certain day. Um, so that's an interesting thing because because like as I think about it, you know. So are you saying, Val, that like masks may not even be a disputable matter because they're not scriptural? Well, I don't know how many <laughs> email address and if I want to say that on this podcast. Complicated it <laughs> um, even I more. I will go out on a limb and say I I do. I personally 
I, I, I don't see a biblical reason yeah. for not wanting to wear a mask. Well, the, what about the what about the whole idea though that the government is forcing you to do it? I and think that's that, an American value. That's not a Jesus value. Yeah. Look, so so I, send all the, emails to Greg though. Don't send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, sorry, so we're I'm so the guest here. I'm the guest. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you can I email the Val at. No. <laughs> um. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Jim. Rescue, rescue this conversation. Well, I, I don't have. A, I'm not sure I have a rescue for it. I, I thought the the parallel though is that these people were were had these convictions in Romans 14, Greg. You mentioned like the Sabbath day or the mm -hmm. um, eating meat because they thought I am. It's sin if I do that, and I want to follow the Lord, and so it's against my conscience. So I can't eat this. That meat was offered to an idol, and I don't want to eat it. So it's sinful so like value you were saying this is a spiritual matter I'm, I'm trying to be a good christian here i i feel bad about eating this meat because it was offered to an idol in a ceremony and i can't do it so that's for father the lord the example that i think of when someone says i just i don't want to do it is for me it's like saying i have a deep conviction that i don't want to stop at this stop sign in my neighborhood i mean there's a stop sign in my neighborhood i think it's i think it's worthless it's, there's no point so i just don't want to stop it anymore and I'm a weaker brother, and that's my conviction not to stop at the stop sign and say, but it's it's a law. You have to stop at the stop sign. Yeah, well, I, I don't like that law, and I disagree with that law, and my conviction is not to stop, not to obey that law. And I think maybe the simple answer is Romans 13 doesn't allow you the freedom to have a conviction to disobey the law. Yeah. You don't have that. That's freedom. Romans 13 kind of takes that away. You can't say my conviction is to not pay taxes. It's my conviction. Leave me alone. No, that's not biblical. Right. right? Mm. So, but all the convictions here where people are trying to follow the Lord, not trying to say, I just want to do what I want to do. And I don't want someone to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of things government tells me to do. I don't like, I don't, you know, and, but we've got to do it anyway. But it was such a mind twister for me. I, I had honestly, when I was posting, I I had, no, I had no idea what to say. So, yeah. Thanks for indulging me in wrestling with it. With yeah. That is very interesting. But let's dive into chapter fifteen just briefly, um, looking at the first part because in the, in chapter fourteen he, he talks about the weak brother, but now he brings up the strong, and so uh, chapter fifteen says, "We who are strong have an obligation to to beat with the failings of the weak." and not to please ourselves mm -hmm. let each of us please his neighbor for his good to build him up for christ did not please himself but as it is written the reproaches of those who reproach me pro reproach you fell on me for whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction that through the endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope and then he says may the god of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together uh, that together you may with one voice glorify God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another in, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your guys' thoughts on this? It seems like a good kind of... Um, you know, emphasis on, again, it's about building each other up and helping each other. And, and your little story, Jim, it seemed like the guy, there was none of that. He wasn't thinking about uh, other people. Uh, he was just thinking about himself. And um, well, I think the, and that little story, the conviction of someone who fairly, felt very strongly that masks were a bad idea and I don't think it's right. And I don't think all those, all those reasons people have for not wanting to wear masks would say, look, but for the failings of the weak, you people that want to wear them, I'll put it on and not please myself. Right. And so I'll try to do that. Yeah, so um, again, with such, such a controversial issue, it's hard, like hard for people who were not part of it to understand how strong the feelings were on each side of that issue. It was something that the rest of the world did not seem to have a struggle with. Um, but look, maybe the maybe the answer here, Greg, is if you just took this tack with every issue, all these things, whether it's alcohol, masks, movies, all those things, you're saying I'm trying to, all the time is please other people. I'm really trying to think of others first, and 
in, in the, 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 the sin of self-absorption and self-centeredness that I've got burning inside me. I'm trying to wrestle with that and not have that rule in my life and trying to live for others. If that was more, Ali, I'm thinking of what you were saying before, if that was more your guiding principle, that was your, what your conscience was doing, you'd be all right. Hey, one other thought, Greg, if I could mention it, I think just verse three is interesting because I've heard this said before um, so many times in scripture. Someone said every time in scripture, I, I, don't, I, I guess I don't know if it's universal, but I think of there where God, where, where there's a rule that comes out in, 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 in God's word, it says, you should do this. Like here, you should, we are strong, have an obligation to bear the feelings of the weak. This is what you should do. Then it's immediately followed by, for consider Jesus, who did it all for you, <laughs> right? So you should be generous. And then um, for consider Christ, who though he had all everything at the, at the side of the Father, gave it all on the side and, and, and left it all and gave it all for you, um, which actually is a passage somewhere. I can't think of it right now. But I, that, but I think that pattern is, it may not be universal, but it happens again and again and again and again in scripture. It's like, yes, here's the rule you should follow. You'll never be able to follow it fully. You'll never be, if you really try, you'll never be able to do it. But there is one who did it for you mm -hmm. and mm. It in your place. And if you look at him and you say, not just because he's the example to say, here, I did it right, do, do what I do, but he did it for you in your place and gave it to you. So therefore, you're right. Jesus didn't live to please himself. Jesus wasn't saying, I don't, I don't have to do this. You know, I'm going to die for these people. He could have said that, but he didn't. And he set aside all those rights he had for us. Anyway, uh, I, I just highlighted that when I was reading this mm -hmm. today, like the, just for Christ in verse three, because that pattern, I, that, ever since I heard that, I started looking for it everywhere in scripture when I see it now, to try to see it. Oh, that's cool. That's a great, man, that's a great reminder mm -hmm. and good word. Any other thoughts uh, on chapter 15? I love verse 13. This It's kind of like a prayer. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Yeah, I just love that. I love that verse. I, it's a great memory verse. Um, so... I think just kind of in conclusion, kind of wrapping this all up, uh, let's just talk about how the gospel is the key to understanding how to live this out. Like that this is not something we're just like, you know, doing, doing in our flesh or we're not trying to follow these rules. Um, that the only way we can truly live this kind of life, you know, in regards to our, the government, in regards to loving other believers, um, in regards to, you know, making an impact is through the gospel. Anybody want to talk about that? So true, Greg. It's so true. That's why we're gospel addicts, right? <laughs> so it's it, it good enough it's good it's, it's the driving force of your whole life once you start getting into your heart and realize what he's done for you right so val and i'm hoping you see it because you work with people all the time and training people up to kind of serve the lord and in full-time christian ministry i hope you you just see that too god the gospel drive in your life and what you do what you do for a living and what you're trying to build in other people as well i'm sure you see that too yeah no it's I mean, it, uh, it, it's such a beautiful thing to say, you know, like we, we do, we do follow these rules. We follow these principles, but we do that because that's what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. And we just want to be like Jesus. Mm, amen. So then wherever the chips fall, they fall, but we are trying to follow in the, in the pattern of Jesus. Um, and that as we do that as lights, as lights hopefully somewhat close to maybe looking a little bit like Jesus <laughs> that that'll be the aroma of life to those around us you know but but what it yeah I just think it's such a beautiful thing like it is a whole paradigm shift from religion to just wanting to be like Jesus because of who he has been to us you know and um yeah it's a really I mean it's a such a simple truth but it's it change it changes everything changes everything about us
when you were talking, I was just thinking of that verse, I think it's in Colossians, when Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then we also will be revealed with him in glory. It's Christ our life. Christ is our entire life. Yeah. And mm. just the way you were describing it made me think of that verse, that, you know, that's, you know, and again, that's why we're gospel addicts, because once Jesus gets a hold of your heart, it's what you live for. And then, Ali, I know that you know, you've been a Christian for a couple of years now, right? So Jesus mm -hmm. got a hold of your heart, too, and you feel that, you see that, you see the transformation, the change in look, your life, and and it's uh, it's 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 uh, I don't know, Greg. So we always say it's change from the inside out, right? It's <laughs> yeah, Christ, Christ our life. Yeah, and look at look at verse uh, eighteen in chapter fifteen. Paul Paul even kind of brings us up for I will I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's Paul saying it's all about Christ. It's not about him. Um, oh, wow. And that's a Christian who accomplished a lot. Wrote the book of Romans. <laughs> that's right. He wrote the book of Romans. Anybody have any final any final thoughts? I don't know that we, uh, um, you know, this is, you know, like a, what I love about these chapters is they're so practical because we we do have to figure out because we all live under a government and we have to figure out like uh how, how do we how do we live under the government that mm -hmm. um we we all have to deal with christians with different convictions and so how can we love each other and defer to each other and um so i think it's just there's some really great practical stuff here any any final thoughts from you guys go for it <laughs> no, I, I, you kind of pointed out i think these are like docs mini doxologies like chapter 11 was a doxology ended with a doxology transition to chapter 12 yeah and that you know verse 5 and 6 may the god of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with christ jesus that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. You highlighted that before, but yeah. it's a nice way to end. And this ver other verse you highlighted, verse 13, I think I'm going to try to get it written out somewhere and put on my wall as a plaque or something. It's such a great verse to think about. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I know you read them before, but this, I think they bear repeating. Maybe a, a good way to kind of wrap things up. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Gospel Addict Podcast. Feel free to contact us via email at gospeladdictpodcast at gmail.com. Stay tuned for our next episode. And remember, on your worst days, you're never beyond the reach of God's grace. And on your best days, you're never beyond the need of God's grace. See you next time.